Beats and bloggers. Stay with Gemma as she gets the latest from the UAE's biggest influencers. It's my pleasure to welcome Ramsey Nakad. Welcome to the show. Hey, how are you? Good, thank you. I feel like I just caught you out there. Yeah, I'm, I'm awake. You're I'm awake. in Dance FM studio. That's right. You just said this music. The, the it's best place to up. start the morning is right here. <laughs> I bet you. You're co-founder and managing partner at Bragg Agency. So pretty much that means you're a social media expert. Why is the UAE so consumed by online platforms? Well, I mean, it's a new thing. Uh, everyone's talking about it. Uh, I think social media took the whole world by storm. So, um, But, you know, it's very controversial at the same time. It's stirred up a lot of conversation, which is always good. It's good to have that kind of conversation. But I think the, the, the main thing is that connection, the democratization of marketing. You know, it, it gave uh, people the freedom of expression and it just put it out there. People don't need a medium to communicate or to say what they want or to endorse a brand or not. So I think for that reason, it became quite popular. The, the freedom, as you say, the liberty and Instagram in particular, that is taking over the lives of millennials here. In fact, the UAE ranks as the MENA region's highest Instagram adoption rate. What does that mean exactly? Well, I think people spend more than two hours on their on Instagram every Guilty. day. Guilty. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> Um, but again, like with, with social media, it's, it's a trend, you know, like uh, I, I think it's probably passing and it's always renewing itself. So today it's Instagram, tomorrow it might be something else. You, you never know. But it means that people are spending a lot of time on, the, on their phones and uh, they're, very on, they're very connected online, but they're extremely disconnected in the real world, right? And in real life. And that's why our, our last event, which is the IP that we created for Yes, was called Club Social and the whole point was to kind of bring people together this online community that's growing online um, in, in real life So the UAE it actually has 1.2 million daily Instagram users now it's seeing a huge drive though in the engagement now between brands and consumers so what factors do you think are coming into play aside from the fact you're saying you know people have freedom of speech on this online platform they've got the liberty to share whatever they like uh, is it because uh, the accessibility, I mean, we're talking millennials here in particular, I think, in that 1.2 million count. But also, I mean, older generations, they're also catching on. So what is it about Instagram in particular that is driving this close connection between the brand and the user? Well, it's very visual. Uh, pe people are becoming less and less, you know, they're becoming lazy. Uh, <laughs> they, they don't want to write. Uh, they're becoming, they're expressing themselves more visually, which is great because at, at some point you are getting a little bit lazy on the writing point, but you're getting super creative on on the visual side. You, you know, I see a lot of uh, teenagers right now, and the the content that they're able to generate, like our generation was not able to do that. So they're very visually visually skilled, which which is which is wonderful. But the the rise of that. Uh, in, in, of Instagram is, is great at some point but then it's also bad in the other I think the, the use of word as influencers I think created a lot of stirred up a lot of debate because uh, what, what classifies someone as an influencer over, over another um, so the, this is the thing which I think now the government is trying to regulate which is I think it's good it's, it's creating a lot of conversation and at the end of the day it's maybe forcing a lot of the the wannabes um, separating the wannabes from from the from the real good ones, and then it's forcing them to think more as businesses and entrepreneurs, which is I think is, is very much needed right now. You know, more entrepreneurship, drive for entrepreneurship. So the minute you you start fo forcing these individuals to think like businesses, mm. and then you get them to register and then to hire people and to There's keep an more account, etc. I think eventually it'll create a lot of opportunities, whether employment opportunities or job opportunities or like a whole new market segment that will open up that I think will benefit the economy as a whole later on. You make a good point though about the governance of these kind of platforms because as you say anyone can claim to be an influencer and they are influencing many followers so yeah. you support this uh, government movement then to regulate social platforms. Yeah, I, th I think so. I mean, uh, again, the term, I have an issue with the term because at the end of the day, there's so many brands that influence as well, advertising agencies influence. So that, that term to be pegged to an individual, I think is wrong. And plus, you have a lot of influential people like, you know, you have a lot of moms that have master's degree and doctor's degree that are very influential in their communities that might not necessarily have the time to be so influential online. 
uh, and and they're not classified as such. So I think the the term should they should be like Instagrammers, you know, <laughs> yes. or YouTubers or bloggers, you know, and not like yeah, not I think the influence, yeah, not yes. self self titled. So I think that that's the issue. And then regulation is definitely definitely I think a good thing, just because now there's so much happening online. So you need to create that separation between what is real and what is not and what is good and what is bad especially exactly. that you have this young generation that is growing up thinking like oh I don't need to go to university and but I can just dress up and take pictures of myself and I'll have millions of followers so I think it's sending a wrong message to the, to the young generation Beats and bloggers stay with Gemma as she gets the latest from the UAE's biggest influencers live now on Instagram Dance FM UAE I'm back with Ramsey Nakad so we were just talking about the fact that Instagram it's growing increasingly popular both for brands and individuals. Of course, it's great for business, but what about the health effects? So we already know millennials, they are maxing out their screen time in excess. How are brands uh, helping with their own influence to remedy this situation? Well, I mean, uh, they're, they're participating. They're not helping to remedy. <laughs> they're actually contributing to it. And I think, you know, uh, uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of emphasis on the individuals. I think there should be a lot more emphasis on the brands because at the end of the day, there there's someone that's paying the bill. So I think that brands should be should be given a lot of the responsibility on what they're putting out and who they're endorsing and who they're asking to you know to be endorsed by. Uh, not so much the individual. I mean, uh, because it's a very thin line. Social media is great because it gave people that liberty and that freedom of expression. I don't think we should limit that. But then when the minute there's an exchange of money and mm. it becomes a business, I think that's where the brands as well as the individuals participating need to have a bit more structure and a bit more regulation. Into it. So what about this whole notion of transporting Instagram offline? So trying to build offline communities, but using the platform of Instagram to uh, harness that opportunity. Yeah. Well, I mean, Brag is all about creating platforms, right? Uh, and bringing communities together. We've done that for the last eight years in Dubai. We've managed to build a lot of great uh, platforms for people to come and connect. Whether it was Soldi XB or Fashion Forward or Market OTB or Beach Canteen, etc. I mean, that, that was the whole premise is that even before social media there in Dubai and the UAE there's a bit of disconnect between the different uh, communities so we just wanted people to come together and connect and I think that's happening more and more now and that's very beneficial and and the last IP that we created for Yas in Abu Dhabi was Club Social and the idea was to bring that online community together in real life and for them to connect and exchange and then make sure that everything in that place is Instagrammable so at least the people that are trigger happy you yeah. know at least have something to do there <laughs> yeah they yeah. can be on their screen and outside at the yeah. same time so in that case Ramsey uh, is that what you're suggesting is the best practice for local UAE businesses here uh, in balancing an online presence equally offline yeah I think I think in fairness uh, the the, influ the so-called influencers or, or that kind of thing it created a lot of imbalance for the marketing industry you know whether it's radio or whether it's print or that because suddenly brands had an access to a, a, a cheaper way to communicate and and that that creates a whole negative effect on the entire industry as a whole so I think I think in, in treating them as such, as, as part of this marketing mix, mm -hmm. and then figuring out, well, automatically first more creative thought and innovation in the, within the industry, and it will kind of force us to work together and see how we can leverage on the different channels in order to come up with the most effective communication strategies. So yeah, I think it's definitely, definitely going in the right direction. So as you just mentioned, that some of those events, like the family art workshops, pop-up events that are mm -hmm. outdoors, but all stemming from the fact that they started online. And actually, I think I love these initiatives because it's not about stalling the progress of social media, more so utilizing these existing online platforms and shifting them into uh, a diverse offline environment. So like you're saying, real instant moments in the real world. Yes, exactly. Is, and that, I, is that the future? Yeah, well, and the, the beauty about social media is it gave startups and small businesses the opportunity to have a stake in today's world. Before, you would have to pay so much money for a new business to market itself and, and get out there. I know for Bragg, for example, and Fashion Forward, uh, if it wasn't for social media, we wouldn't have become so successful so fast. Uh, so, yeah, so therefore, I think the, the future is definitely social, but we also need to, to know that you know the marketing mix and just bringing different things together and 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 
and kind of creating that diversification between what's real and what's fake is, should should be should should be the the future of this industry. And do you think clearing up that um, you know category of what's real, what's fake, that will determine the longevity of these sort of online platforms? I think so because the the reason why social media became so popular is because at some point advertising became so fake and people were just sick of people telling them things that are were unreal. So I think social media was a was a breath of fresh air where everyone was becoming, you know, talking their mind, being realistic. But now it's becoming fake again. So mm, that differentiation back. should come back to to the real world and to what's real. Yeah, yeah get back to the origins of it, the yeah. root. The yeah. real stuff. Like dance music. <laughs> you know? Exactly. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your insights today, Ramsey. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. You're welcome. You can catch our full Beats and Bloggers interview at dancefm.com. Love this one. It's Net Sky with Macklemore and Digital Farm Animals. This is Rio 97.8 Dance FM.